Hey, what's happening? I'm Captain Mike, and uh, welcome to another Thursday evening live seminar, man. I am absolutely fired up. Again, I'm seeing some uh, some new names here popping up. I certainly appreciate that. Uh, let's get started right from the beginning. Got a lot to talk about. As I mentioned, if you haven't tuned in before, um, Captain Mike hosts the Florida Sport Fishing TV and uh, really getting going with these Thursday night seminars, man. I'm absolutely loving them. And I just want to mention just a few quick tip, your few quick things that I want you to know uh, before we get going here. And then we'll get right into our live uh, fishing report, our real-time fishing report, and then right into our seminar. So Florida Sport Fishing TV, man, we are absolutely killing it. We're down here in Marathon. We are now filming our 11th consecutive season. I wanna remind everybody that the 11th season is gonna debut in July on Bally Sports Sun, formerly Fox Sports Florida. Same channel, same network, same great programming, just a new name, okay? Uh, right now, you can catch all of our episodes, of course, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Florida Sport Fishing. And I do want to mention that all of our Thursday night seminars are also going to be up on our YouTube channel. So you can see them in our feed, but if you want to come back down the line, if you want to watch them in their entirety on a bigger screen or whatever it may be, you'll be able to do that on our YouTube channel by next week. All of the previous ones, this is like our fifth or sixth one that we're doing tonight, uh, will all be posted. And then as we progress, once we're, we're caught up, after Thursday night and within a day or so, they'll, they'll be posted on YouTube as well. Make sure, if you're not already, of course, uh, you know, liking us and following us here on Instagram, make sure that you do that. We're obviously trying to grow this. You know, I mentioned this last week, a lot of guys, you know, they're buying followers and just a bunch of fake numbers, you know, that's not, that's not what we're gonna do. I'm not gonna do it, I refuse. You know, we'll, we'll crawl up the chain here, but we'll do it with people just like you. You know, quality audience, guys that love to fish. That's, that's what I want right there. I'm not just looking for numbers. So again, what we're doing here, you know, if you're just watching for the first time is we're providing a real-time fishing report on what's happening here in the Keys. Just a quick overview, because of course you can't touch on everything from Key Largo to Key West in just a matter of minutes, right? But a quick overview to get you, you know, up to speed as to what's going on. And then we jump right into a particular topic. And that topic is going to be relevant to what's going on right now. Either something that we're doing, you know, that I'm out there doing right now, or that's happening here in the Keys. So it's all really good stuff that you can get in on, you know, immediately and, and real time. Like I said, that's what's important. So let's get right to it here. You know, on the fishing report side, we're going to start off short. The wind has been crazy, okay, we've had that cold front come through where just recently where it was honking, you know, 25 to 30, even more. So it's tough to get offshore, but it certainly has started to calm down. Guys that are running out there are finding the blackfin tunas on the humps. The swordfish bite, as usual, is relatively consistent. Um, some dolphin, some dolphin offshore starting to show up, which is really nice, okay. Um... Not a lot of big fish, a lot of schoolie sized fish, some gaffers mixed in, but not a lot of the big, big fish yet, but it's still early. But they are trickling in, the dolphin are trickling in offshore, so that's nice to see as well. Okay, the occasional wahoo here and there, that's always a possibility. And of course, sail fishing, you know, some guys will rack up a handful of releases each day and other guys will never see a fish. That giant body of fish just hasn't pushed down yet, but we're gonna see more and more sailfish action pick up as April progresses and even into May, okay, down here in the Keys. Uh, the wreck fishing, a lot of amberjacks on the wrecks, there's some king mackerel mixed in. A, a nice size mutton here or there, but certainly not a lot of muttons around, okay? You're gonna find if you're really looking for the muttons, Hawks Channel right now has some mutton snappers, not giant fish, but 20 to 24 inch fish, you know, certainly keepers. And that's again on the humps and the coral heads in Hawks Channel. On the reef, yellowtail bite's been pretty consistent as long as you've got good conditions. You need the current, that's the key. You need to have that moving water in order to get those yellowtails to bite, okay? Some nice mangroves mixed in, some lane snappers in deeper water rather than the patch reefs in that 30, 35 foot 
40 foot, the length snappers that we've been finding have been in 70, 75 foot in that range. So don't, you know, don't discount fishing a little bit deeper, anchoring a little bit deeper. And, you know, if you can't find fish on the shallower side, on the patches, or if there's no current, don't be afraid to look a little bit deeper there, okay? Then, of course, moving even shallower, you know, on the bay side, the snapper bite's been consistent. There's still a few cobias in the bay. Uh, bone fish I'm seeing, you know, being caught. I'm not out there fishing the flats, but from what I'm seeing and hearing, there's certainly some bone fish out there. And then, of course, there's the tarpon, which leads us right in to our topic of conversation tonight, which is Florida Keys bridge tarpon fishing. Okay. But before we dig into that, I do want to tell you that along with the tarpon at the bridges, there's a wide variety of other species that you can target at these Florida Keys bridges. You know, snook, snappers, groupers, even though grouper season, of course, isn't open yet, which is right around the corner. And by the way, at the end of April, in preparation of opening season for grouper, we're going to have a kick-ass grouper seminar. It's going to be a long one. We're going to cover a lot of tactics, but that's in a few weeks or in a couple of weeks here. You know, but again, there are a lot of groupers at the bridges, jacks on top water plugs. Man, if you're looking for some exciting fishing, don't be afraid to fish these bridges, especially seven mile here in Marathon with top water plugs. Okay, you'll get these big jack crevals, you know, fired up. And I'm talking about fish from five to 25 pounds. That's a big fish and super exciting on the top water plugs. And then, of course, there's the sharks. Lots of sharks at the bridge. It's a really exciting fishery. It's something that we did recently in just a few hours. I think we released seven sharks, a variety of species, nurse sharks, black tips, and even a four to 500 pound hammerhead, which was a super exciting battle in just, you know, five, six feet of water right along that bridge as a backdrop was really, really cool. But again, let's get right to the tarpon, okay? Because these are world-class fish, they're trophy fish that if you've never caught a tarpon, I'll tell you what, the coming six to eight weeks, this is when you're gonna do it. This is how and when you're gonna do it. And there's a lot of different ways and a lot of different venues where you can catch tarpon. But when it comes to fishing out of a boat along the bridges, there's a really specific technique and there's a lot of little details that are important for you you know, to really understand if you want to be successful, okay? If you really want to be successful. Now, understand there's a lot of bridges in the Keys. Some, there, there's probably tarpon cruising around all of them, okay? Very likely. But there's certain bridges that are, are really tarpon meccas. You know, Long Key up there is absolutely wild. It's a great bridge. Uh, Seven Mile Bridge here, right where I am here in Marathon, is world class. And then, of course, there's Bahia Honda. Everybody's heard of Bahia Honda, right? Now, each of these bridges requires a little bit of, of fine tuning, a little bit of adjusting, but there's a lot of the same tactics apply across the board in all of these bridges. For starters, let's talk about the fish themselves, the tarpon. You know, these fish are migrating. They actually spawn way out in the Gulf of Mexico and they're traveling right now. And, and right here we are, right in the Keys, right in between two oceans. And that's where all these bridges are. They're lined up right in between two oceans. They're these giant fish magnets, these giant structures, right? And they hold so much life. And as the tarpon cruise in and out and around these bridges, they are often feeding very heavily. Now, not all of the time, okay? Because sometimes they'll get lockjaw. When is that? When that water temperature drops below their liking. Magic number, 75 degrees. There it is right there. You get below 75 degrees, I'm not saying you're not gonna catch tarpon, but I'm telling you it's gonna become challenging. You want that water temperature 75 degrees or higher, okay? A lot of nice fish around right now, fish in the 50 to 80 pound class, and certainly even triple digit fish. So we're not talking about juvenile tarpon, we're talking about full size megalops. I mean, these really giant fish that are you know longer than I am. And how exciting is that for a guy to be able to hook this giant tarpon, fish is jumping like crazy, they're wild, they pull like crazy, scream and drag, absolutely an awesome fish to catch. But understand, your success ratio, best case scenario, you're looking at maybe 30%, okay? Maybe three out of 10. Three out of 10, you're gonna land. Seven out of 10, you're gonna bust off, 
okay? Because there's so many ways to bust them up. There's more ways to lose these tarpon at these bridges than there is to catch the tarpon. So for starters, let's talk about boat positioning because that's essential, boat positioning. So, you know, generally speaking, if we're talking about the seven mile bridge, we've got two bridges, right, that run parallel to each other. We've got the old bridge that was built back in 1912, the original structure, okay? And then right alongside it, you have the new bridge, which was built back in 1982, okay? 70 years later. The old bridge is really gonna be where you're gonna fish. You know, that, that's gonna be the better, better of the two bridges to fish, not only for the tarpon, for all of the species. But understand that when you hook that fish, when you set up, if you've got the two bridges lying parallel to each other, okay, and you've got an outgoing tide, you're obviously going to be anchored on the bay side, and you're going to back up and be fishing, presenting baits on the shadow line of the old bridge. Picture that in your head. But when you hook a fish, guess where he's going? Nine out of ten times, he's going with the current, he's going to go under the bridge, and he may go under both of them, then you may end up fighting that fish on the ocean side, okay? Now, it's not unheard of. You could also anchor in between the two bridges and present baits along the shadow line of the new bridge. So now you're anchored in between the two bridges. Not unheard of, certainly a great possibility as well. There's a lot more room to maneuver and to get under that big bridge. So for example, guy like me, 39 CB with triples, Hey, I could tarpon fish too. I could tarpon fish right alongside a guy in a little bay boat or in a guy in a little flat skiff. I can do it right there at that bridge. I may be a little hesitant to anchor, you know, on the bay side where I may have to maneuver really quickly below those arches on the old bridge. That may be a little bit tricky. I can do it, but certainly might be a little bit tricky, um, especially with current screaming, the fish is running, jumping. It's so hectic. But on the big bridge, it's easy for a bigger boat to, to back out of there. So just keep that in mind depending on your boat. A grapnel anchor is really what you're going to want, not a Danforth type of anchor like a fortress. Okay, there's a lot of rubble underneath there, a lot of rubble under the bridges from all of the construction, the debris over the years, the rock, the rubble, the coral, whatever's underneath there, it's crazy. So you really want a grapnel anchor, something that can break away if it does get caught in the bottom. However, when you get bit, you're not picking up your anchor. You don't have time for that. You gotta chase that fish immediately. Okay, so your anchor is gonna be on a breakaway system, or not a breakaway system, but rigged with a buoy. Okay, rigged with a buoy. So as soon as you hook up, you're firing up that motor and immediately you're untying that anchor line off that bow cleat and the buoy falls into water right there with your anchor and you're now maneuvering around chasing that fish. When you need to get back on the ball, you simply come back to your anchor, to the poly ball, and then obviously snag it with a boat hook, a gaff, whatever it is you're going to do, grab it, and retie, and you're back in position. So don't try and lift that anchor, you know, or retrieve the anchor after you hook a fish. You're not going to have time to do that. When you hook a fish, everything is happening so fast, you have to react immediately in order to even stand a chance to catch that fish. Why? Because again, if he's going in between the bridge pilings and your line is rubbing against the concrete bridge, what's gonna happen? Okay, what's gonna happen? Well, obviously, you know as well as I do, zing pow, you know, premature tackle failure. So, and, and it's gonna happen no matter what. It's gonna happen, I don't care how fast you are, on the number of fish, it's gonna happen to you, okay? So just, you know, be ready for that. Nevertheless, your anchor's on a ball, Okay, you hook a fish, you drop your anchor, you now go chase them and hopefully you catch that fish. Also remember, remember what's around you. What, what do I mean by that? There's a lot of flats around that seven mile bridge. You can't fish just everywhere and you certainly can't get a bigger boat like mine everywhere under that bridge, okay? So on the you know east side of the bridge, there's a big channel right there, really a great tarpon spot all the way to, you know, around Fred Dutree. Everybody knows Fred Dutree, right? Growing on the uh, Seven Mile Bridge. Those are all really good tarpon stretches right there. Even by Pigeon Key, just to the east of Pigeon Key is a channel right there. That's a great tarpon spot as well, okay? Um, 
Now, Bahia Honda, that's a different story. We're going to talk about Bahia Honda in a second. I want to continue to fill you in on Seven Mile. Now, at the Seven Mile Bridge, once we're in position, okay, we've got our boat in the proper position. We're presenting our baits right to the shadow line. And we may have to move a couple of times depending on where we end up on the anchor because, of course, I don't want to present my bait where it's sitting in front of a concrete pylon, in front of an abutment. I want my bait sitting in between in that open water where it's flowing. That, that's where I want my bait at that seven mile bridge right along the shadow line. Again, either on the new bridge, the old bridge, I'm either anchored in between the bridges or I'm on the bay side, you know, backed up and presenting baits to the old bridge, okay? Um, even on an incoming tide, I could anchor again in between the bridges and present my bait to the old bridge, and I, I'm trying not to confuse you here, but you can picture this. But on a bigger boat like mine, I may again want to be on the bay side because it all depends, you know, on maneuverability of the vessel you're in and so on and so forth. So you have to take that into consideration. Never put your safety or, or your boat in jeopardy because let me tell you something, that current rips through there. It rips through there, and you can do it in almost any size boat, but you've got to be ready, you've got to be on the ball, you've got to know how to handle your boat, because one wrong move, if you literally just, you know, do something wrong, you easily could smack right into that bridge, and obviously you don't want that to happen, okay? So, I'm in position, it's now time to deploy baits, we're fishing two rods, two lines, that's it. Some guys will fish a third, but really you only need two because you're only trying to hook one fish at a time. And once you hook a fish, you obviously have to clear all the other lines in order to go chase that fish. So two, two baits is really ideal. At the seven mile bridge, the tarpon are keyed in on mullet. Okay, understand that the number one bait for tarpon at the seven mile bridge is gonna be mullet. Bahia Honda, different story, it's gonna be crabs. Now you can use crabs, you can use pilchards, pinfish, they'll eat a variety of different baits, but we're talking about really increasing your odds. This time of the year, there's a lot of mullet around. That's what they're keyed in on. That's what they're feeding on. That's what you're gonna to wanna to use as a live mullet. You can catch them in all of the canals here. You can catch them in marinas. Everybody knows how to catch mullet, right? Worst case scenario, there are some guys that deliver live mullet throughout the keys here. Okay, and you can look them up, you can Google them, and they'll literally deliver live mullet right to your boat, to your bay pen, wherever you are. Maybe you can cross paths with them somewhere. Um, so you can get your hands on live mullet relatively easily. You know, a couple dozen for an entire trip is plenty. You're not even going to go through that many because if the tarpon are biting, they're biting and you don't need a lot of mullet. And if the tarpon are not biting, well, then you don't need a lot of mullet. So either way, a couple dozen, you know, should, be, should suffice. Um, and of course, you just always want to go through and present nice, lively baits. Tarpon are not stupid, okay? They're, even when they're balled up, they're not dumb. They didn't get to be 100 plus pounds by being stupid, okay? If the bait doesn't look right, move right, I say this, you know, all of the time and it's the same here, they're not going to touch it because there's a million perfectly fresh, great mullet for them to eat that if they look at one that's all red and beat up and barely moving, they're like, eh, you know, I'm gonna hesitate, maybe I just won't eat that at all, okay? So it's the same, you know, like I said, you want really nice, fresh baits. The tackle that we're using, very, very simple, but again, you've gotta do it right. Listen, there's a lot of different outfits that you can be using, I don't care. If you're an experienced tarpon fisherman, something's working for you, stick with it, man. I'm not saying my way is the best way, I'm saying my way is my way. That's all I'm telling you, my way is my way and it works. But if something's working for you, stick with it, tell me all about it, I'd love to learn, okay? Um, but to shorten the learning curve, if you're just getting into tarpon fishing here at the bridges and you wanna catch these fish, I'm gonna tell you, this is a perfect setup. It's a Chaos 7-foot spinning rod, okay, rated for 15 to 30-pound line. It's got plenty of beef, but a nice soft tip, and not that you need to detect a strike, because when there's a 100-pound tarpon that eats your mullet, you know you got them on. You, don't worry about that. You know you got them on. The rod is matched to a Daiwa Isla size 7,000 reel. There it is, super, super reliable spinning reel, has an unbelievable drag system, incredibly smooth, okay, I mean, incredibly smooth. And that's imperative for tarpon fishing because 
one little glitch in that drag and you're gonna pop that fish off, I guarantee it. So these Daiwa spinners, man, I'm telling you what, silky like butter, okay? Plenty of line capacity, really important, loaded with fresh 20 pound diamond line, okay? I cannot stress this enough. This is not the place to make a mistake with your mono, okay, we're, there we go, back on. It's not the place to, to go chintzy. It's not the place where if you're abraded not to, you know, put fresh line on, you have to do it. You need fresh line every time you're going out there tarpon fishing. Maybe not the whole spool, but certainly the top 100 yards at a bare minimum, okay? But again, perfect setup right here. Really light, super strong, a 20-pound spinning outfit, ideal for the tarpon, okay? Even those big 100-plus pound fish. Now, how do I have this rig from my 20 pound running line? Okay, just pull a little bit more of that off from the 20 pound running line. All right, we're back on. I don't know what's going on. As a matter of fact, Instagram was down all day today because there were so many people on our page. It was crazy, but they seem to have gotten it fixed here. Nevertheless, right through our main running line, we go through a float, and again, this is just an indicator as to where my bait is. You don't have to use a float. Some guys will use a balloon. I discourage it. You don't want that plastic floating around by any means. Turtles will eat that, fish will eat that, so don't use a balloon. Um, so this float seems to be an ideal, you know, kind of not a strike indicator. Remember, these fish are big. You don't need a strike indicator. You know when you got a tarpon on. There's no question. It's not... Do I think I got them on? Do I not got them on? You either do or you don't. It's that simple. But this will help you really have an understanding as to where your bait is, where that bait is adjacent to that shadow line to the bridge. From that 20 pound diamond line, I go to a diamond ball bearing swivel, really small right there. That's all that I need. And then I have a length. You can see I'm gonna kind of keep going here about six to eight feet of diamond 50 pound presentation fluorocarbon leader. Very abrasion resistant, very strong, nearly invisible in the water, all of the properties that I'm looking for when I'm tarpon fishing. I finish it off with a VMC 70 circle hook, right there, a VMC 70 circle hook. Now keep in mind, this is a tournament circle hook. It's an inline circle hook. You're releasing all of these tarpon. It's ideal for the fish. But what's neat about these hooks, they have what's called a B-lock bait stopper. So it's an improvement to the VMC circle hook. You can see right there, it's just a typical circle hook, but right there on the bend, and hopefully you can see that, there's like almost like a really heavy piece of mono that's held in place, and that prevents that circle hook from turning back into the bait. It's great not only for tarpon fishing, but for a variety of other live bait fishing scenarios as well. So again, that's just your typical VMC tournament circle hook with B-lock right there, the bait stopper. Now 7 ideal size for the mullet. How do you hook the mullet? Hold it in your hand, go through the top lip, not through both, because you don't want to close that mouth and prevent that, that bait fish from breathing. Go right through that top lip, okay? Just like that, right through the top lip. Fully exposed, right through the top lip, that mullet can swim really naturally. Now understand, you don't need any weight, okay, because the mullet is just gonna swim in the current really, really naturally. I'm gonna feed my bait back and I'm gonna position that mullet right on that shadow line. That's why I want that mullet. I'm gonna lock up my reel, but I'm gonna fish with a relatively light drag, just enough drag for that circle hook to, to, to stick, to hook the fish, but not super tight. Why? Because that fish is gonna eat the bait, He's gonna scream potentially right through the bridge and make a right or a left, off and a right. And as soon as he does that, my line is potentially rubbing right up against that concrete pattern. And if I don't back off on the drag, if I'm fishing a really tight drag and that, that line rubs along that concrete piling, zing pow, you're gonna bust them off every time. So fish a relatively loose drag until you get on top of the fish until you throw your ball, maneuver through the bridges, and get on top of the fish. Now, when you're close to them and you're you know, fighting them one-on-one -on -one without rubbing up against concrete, you can apply more pressure and not have to worry about busting them off, okay? You've cleared the other line, like I said, you threw the poly ball, you either went through both bridges, one bridge, whatever it may be. 
absolutely awesome fight. Take your time. These are super strong fish and they'll fight right till the very end. Okay, and then of course you wanna take your time and release that fish, revive it. These fish are worth far more alive than dead. Nobody, you know, harvest tarpon. We don't wanna do that. It's an incredible game fish. You know, brings billions of dollars and tourist dollars. I, I don't know how much, I'm guessing billions, but it's a lot, okay? But it's not even about that. They're, it's not a good eating quality fish. You know, years and years ago, people used to harvest them even here in the Keys. I don't know if they ate them or what they did with them, but you don't have to do that anymore. You know, catch one, take a bunch of pictures, call King Sailfish Release Mounts and have them, you know, make a mount for you there so you can remember that fish forever. Now, the Hia Honda Bridge, okay? Little bit of a different scenario here. And let me just back up just a little bit. I set my two baits, rods are in the rod holders. I'm done, I'm waiting for a bite. That's it, rods are in the rod holders. I'm monitoring everything that's going on. Periodically, I'm gonna reel it up, check my bait, make sure that it looks fresh. I might put a new one on there, okay? But I'm waiting for that tarpon to just engulf that mullet. I know I'm gonna get, you know, I know when I've got a bite, and it's a team effort. One guy's on the rod, the other guy fires up the boat, throws the poly ball, and goes and chases them, okay? So you've gotta communicate with each other because you're moving fast. And obviously you don't want somebody to fall off the boat, which could easily happen if you're on a smaller skiff or bay boat. And you, you, let me tell you something, it's hectic. Chasing these tarpon through these bridges, super exciting, hectic, fast paced. So, you know, something could easily go wrong and you don't want to fall in with that current at the bridges. So be careful there. Now, Bahia Honda, different scenario. And let me tell you something, I've seen the tarpon at Bahia Honda stack up so thick where if you could freeze frame time, I guarantee there might've been 500 tarpon under that bridge. Absolutely unbelievable. And again, two bridges parallel to each other. The old train bridge, you know, it, but this time it's a little bit different because the old bridge is on the south side and the new bridge is on the north side. In Marathon here, with the Seven Mile Bridge, it's the opposite. The old bridge is on the north side and the new bridge is on the south side. So they're swapped there in Bihia Honda. And again, depending on the current, you're often tied off to the old bridge, your boat's positioned in between the two bridges, and you're feeding baits back to the old bridge. So I hope I said that right. You're tied off to the new bridge, like I said, on the north side, and you're again feeding baits back to the old bridge. Some guys will throw the buoy, some guys will actually just tie off right to the big concrete abutment. There's ways to do that. Do whatever you need to do, but understand when you hook up, again, immediately you've got to throw the ball or undo the line, however it is you're fastened to that bridge, and immediately go start chasing that fish. Oftentimes you'll fight that fish right in between the two bridges. Sometimes he'll take you out under the old bridge and you'll have to maneuver around out there chasing them. Um, be careful, there is a really shallow flat on the east side. Once you're on the ocean side to the east, there's a really shallow flat. Now, interestingly at Bija Honda, mullet is not the key bait, it's crabs. It's a small little permit size, you know, quarter, you know, I say permit size, the permit loved those silver dollar size crabs. That's gonna be the best bait to use at Bahia Honda. Same rig with some slight adjustments, okay? I'm using the same float, uh, the same float setup. I'm going to a slightly smaller hook. Instead of a 7-0, I'm fishing that smaller crab, I can use a 5-0. Okay, but nothing smaller than that because of course that tarpon has a really enormous gullet mouth and you wanna really be able to grab that fish with big bite on the hook, otherwise you're not gonna get him. So nothing smaller than a 5 -0, and even that 7 -0 will do as well, but you don't need anything larger than that. You're gonna hook that crab right in the corner, of course a live crab, you can purchase them at local tackle shops, um, you can catch them in traps as well, but of course the local tackle shops is the way to go, really easy. And then about 12 inches away from the crab, we'll add a split shot because that current is ripping through there and we don't want that crab up near the surface. We want them at least a little bit deeper in the water column. Now this is also something different that we do. We put the crab in the water, rods in the rod holder or in your hand, bail is open and I'm slowly feeding that crab out. Why? A mullet 
swims into the current really naturally, has that power to swim into the current, to stay alive, looks really, really good. Even with the rod and the rod holder, that water rushing by, everything looks perfectly natural. If I did that same thing with the crab, the crab is gonna go right to the surface. It may spin, it may flip on its back. Even if it stays, you know, horizontal in the right orientation, it's not moving. But all that water is rushing back at an enormous volume, an enormous rate. You guys know what that current's like under these bridges, right? The tarpon, like I said, they're not stupid. They know that that crab, they're looking up, they got all this bait, everything is moving by them, and then there's a crab that's just sitting there. Well, they know that crab doesn't have the power to swim into the current, they don't do that. Okay, they just don't. So it's an unnatural presentation, and guess what? The tarpon's not gonna eat it. He's not, I'm telling you. So you open the bale, you feed it out. Nice and steady, feed it out, feed it out, feed it out, and feed it all the way back. And you'll see them back there rolling. It's great, especially in May. May is an absolute killer month, the month to catch tarpon down here in the Keys under these bridges, especially at Pihil Honda. May is it, okay? You can go there right now, but I'm telling you, May is on fire. So you're just gonna feed those crabs back or feed that crab back. He gets right to that shadow line, right where all those fish are, and oftentimes you'll get bit right there. If not, reel it all the way back up, all the way back up to the boat, check it, make sure everything is good, you know, make sure that crab is nice and lively, and feed it all the way back, okay? You wanna keep that crab, it's always gonna be moving. He's either gonna be going back with the current as you're feeding that line out, or he's coming back this way as you're reeling it back in, okay, to check it. It's not just gonna be sitting there. You can leave it sitting there, but when you look down the line in either direction and you see guys fighting tarpon and you're not, you're gonna know why, okay? Because your bait's just sitting there and looks incredibly unnatural. So it's really, really important to do that, to feed that back. Also keep in mind, you may catch a bonus fish, you may catch a permit on that crab. That's not unheard of, but very common. So you may catch that bonus right there. Otherwise, it's mostly, of course, gonna be the tarpon other than the occasional barracuda that decides to destroy your mullet or a shark that eats your mullet. A lot of different things like that can happen, but for the most part, it's gonna be the tarpon. So one other thing I wanna mention real quick here, be real careful at that Bahia Honda Bridge. Well, be careful at both bridges. There's a lot of sharks there, but man, at Bahia Honda, there are these enormous hammerhead sharks. I'm talking these things are giant. They're bigger. They're, got to be a thousand pounds. I don't know if it's one or if there's more than one, but they eat the tarpon, okay? So you're hooked up to a giant 100-pound tarpon, and out of nowhere, here comes this, you know, submarine-sized hammerhead shark, great hammerhead, well over a thousand pounds, that's eating a 100-pound tarpon. And of course, you don't want that to happen, clearly, okay, for obvious reasons. So just be careful there. That's also why you don't fight those fish with anything lighter than, you know, this 20 pound spinning outfit because then you're just prolonging the fight and increasing the chances of that tarp and losing its life for the wrong reason, okay? So that wraps it up. That's just an overview. Again, there's a lot of different ways to catch these tarpon down here in the Keys on the flats. You could be on the bridge catching them. What we're talking about is off the boat. Do it right. Make sure your anchor setup is right. Most importantly, communicate. Communicate with who's on the boat and talk about what's going to happen before it happens. Okay, don't wait for it to happen and then, hey, who's starting the boat? Who's grabbing the rod? What am I supposed to do? What are you supposed to do? I thought you were doing that. Okay, that leads to disaster by every single time. So communicate, hey man, when we hook up, you're going to do this, I'm going to do this, this is going to happen, etc., etc., and that will increase your odds of landing these absolutely awesome trophy game fish. If you've never done it, I'm telling you, you got to put tarpon on your bucket list. This is why so many people come to, to the Florida Keys to catch one of these magnificent fish. And not only one. I've been at Bahia Honda, caught half a dozen okay, in one trip. But there's other trips you won't catch one at all. You know, again, you'll know because they're going to be really active. You know, if you see those tarpon rolling and understand why they're rolling. You know, as juveniles, I just want to add this and we'll wrap it up. As juveniles, tarpon grow up in the Everglades and way deep in the back country where there's not a lot of oxygen in that water. So they learn to gulp air from the surface. They come up and gulp air. And they learn that when they're juveniles. So of course that follows them throughout their entire life. And when you see them rolling, they're gulping air. 
Okay, and you'll know they're there. Trust me, there's absolutely no mistaking it. Or another way to know if they're there, just stand on your boat while you're fishing and go like this and look down and just look at the water for a while. And oftentimes you'll see them cruising and swimming right by the boat. It's absolutely an awesome sight to see these tarpon and they're never alone, never alone. So it's always nice to see and a really special experience. So that about wraps it up. Again, we will see you next Thursday night, same time, 7.30. Um, usually by Monday, I announce the topic. And again, that's because it all depends what we're doing, what's going on down here. I really want to give you some really good info to prepare for what's coming up here. So we're fishing tomorrow offshore. We're going permit fishing on the wrecks. You know, wish us luck. Hopefully we'll connect. And I hope you have an absolutely wonderful upcoming weekend. And again, I'm looking forward to seeing you live next Thursday at 730.